name is Dr. Michael Liu. I'm an orthopedic surgeon with the University of Orthopedic Associates. I specialize in surgery of the shoulder, elbow, and upper extremity. This video today is a case presentation to demonstrate how I typically perform an arthroscopic rotator cuff repair. Uh, please enjoy. The patient is a 56-year-old left-hand dominant female. She had an unfortunate slip and fall, which resulted in a right shoulder dislocation. She went to the emergency department where she underwent a closed reduction, meaning they popped the shoulder back into the socket, and she came to see me in the office three days later. Uh, she's healthy overall, no medical history, no surgical history, no allergies, uh, no social history either. So on exam, when she was in the office with me, she had no deformity or ecchymosis. She did have tenderness about the shoulder. She had excellent passive range of motion, meaning I could move her shoulder quite freely. I had difficulty assessing her rotator cuff strength, though, because she had significant pain. X-rays that we took in the office did not show any evidence of fracture or dislocation. Uh, there were no significant arthritic changes about the shoulder either, no calcifications either. So the initial treatment plan was sling mobilization for two weeks. She was to start physical therapy, and she was, come back, she was to come back and see him in the office in approximately one month to see how she's doing. So upon follow-up, she still had excellent passive range of motion. She did have notable weakness in forward elevation and external rotation, though, and that's important for rotator cuff evaluation. She also had a positive drop arm and a positive external rotation lag sign. Again, those are important for rotator cuff strength testing. So from there, we ordered an MRI. This MRI is a, an image of her right shoulder. Uh, this shows that there's a full thickness rotator cuff tear with mild retraction. Uh, this line that shows it's 14.4 uh, millimeters retracted. The white area that is under the line shows uh, fluid where the rotator cuff tendon is actually supposed to be. So the tendon is torn off of the bone, has retracted towards the right of the screen, and there's fluid in place of where the tendon is actually supposed to be. Uh, this is now a sagittal, so we're looking at the patient from side to side. The front of the body or front of the shoulder is to the left of the screen, and the right side of the screen is the back side of the, of the shoulder. Again, the white area is the tear in the rotator cuff tendon. So that's fluid where we're actually supposed to see tendon. So we decided to go for surgery because the patient was young and active and had an acute rotator cuff tear with significant weakness. Here we're performing our diagnostic arthroscopy. The camera is inserted from the back of the shoulder looking forward. We're looking at the glenohumeral joint. Uh, this particular area is looking at the subscapularis, which is the rotator cuff tendon in the front of the shoulder. Uh, we're looking more towards the rotator cuff tear up on the top right of the screen, and we'll look at it from a different view later on. But that just shows the full thickness tear. So we insert this shaving instrument from the front part of the shoulder, and we debride any unhealthy, partially torn, uh, degenerative, you know, non-viable tissue that will cause pain or dysfunction later on down the road. So this part of the procedure is called the debridement. From here, we introduce the camera into the subacromial space. So we're looking from above the rotator cuff now. So the rotator cuff is below us to the left. Below to the right is actually bone. Uh, the shaver is introduced again to once again debride any frayed or unhealthy tissue. We smooth out the undersurface of the acromion, which is the top part of the shoulder blade. Sometimes bone spurs can develop. That can cause irritation and uh, trauma to the rotator cuff underneath. So we smooth this out to make it a bit flatter. We're looking from the side view now. So the front of the shoulder is towards the right of the screen. The burr instrument here is introduced from the back side of the shoulder, and we continue to smooth out the undersurface of the acromion. We don't want to have any sharp, pointy bone edges poking down into the into the rotator cuff after we do our repair. Additionally, this allows marrow elements to come into the shoulder to the repair area, and that can promote healing. So again, we're looking at the rotator cuff here. The rotator cuff is the white layer that's kind of in the middle of the screen going from left to right. Underneath it, with a layer of kind of pinkish, is the bone. And so we're not supposed to, be able to see the bone here. We're only supposed to see rotator cuff. So the rotator cuff is torn in a full thickness manner, it's retracted. And so this allows us to see the underlying bone. It actually allows us to see into the shoulder joint itself, which is supposed to be sealed by the rotator cuff. 
So the shaver is introduced again to debris tissue in the way, and this allows us to clean it up so we get a better view of the rotator cuff. We can check for excursion and mobility of the tendon to see how mobile it is and to see which way the tendon is torn, which way we want to pull it for the repair. The burr is used again to perform what's called a tuberoplasty. This basically means we're taking down a very thin layer of bone uh, to allow for marrow elements to come into the repair area, and this can promote healing as well. From here, we introduce a guide through a tiny little poke hole incision in the skin. This guide is cannulated, so it allows us to put an all suture suture anchor through this guide directly into the bone. Not very traumatic, very small, low profile anchor. So you can see the sutures are in place. We give it a good tug to make sure they're nice and sturdy. We do this again in the back part of the rotator cuff tear. So we're looking at the bone again. And so the guide is on the bone and the anchor is being placed into the bone. So once we've removed the guide, we're going to see the sutures from the anchor. There they are. And doing one more anchor here, uh, because this is actually a good size tear. There's a lot of bone here that's been exposed from the rotator cuff tear. So we need to restore that footprint of the rotator cuff by adequately covering the bone with the tendon. This instrument here is called a retriever. You might imagine that it's used to retrieve. So we're retrieving sutures, and this will allow us to put the sutures into this other instrument called a suture passer. And this suture passer has a needle on it. It uh, has a trigger on the outside. So you fire the trigger, the needle is deployed. There it is. And the suture is passed through the tendon. And then we can shovel the suture back out through our initial portal. And that is passing the tendon, sorry, passing the suture through the tendon quite nicely. So we repeat that three more times, we bring the retriever back in, and now we have to use this instrument to gather the specific sutures that we want to use to finalize the rotator cuff repair. And if you notice, the sutures were all different colors. Uh, this helps us to keep track of the different suture anchors that are being used because this is a three anchor repair. So you can, and you'll see at the end, there's a, a good number of sutures that are being crisscrossed in the area. So we use this instrument to make a hole in the bone. The sutures are passed through another anchor. This anchor is made of plastic. Uh, so the sutures are passed through the anchor, and then the anchor will eventually be introduced into the bone. But first, we're going to pull tension on the sutures. So you can see the sutures are sliding ever so slightly. And you'll, you can see that the tendon of the rotator cuff is now compressed under the sutures. And we're going to continue to do this until there's a good snug fit. So here is the anchor. It's threaded, so it's spun into place, similar to a little plastic screw. You can see there are holes in the anchor to allow for marrow elements from the bone to escape into the area of the repair to once again promote healing. Uh, so we do this one more time. So this is a second plastic anchor they're going to be inserting uh, in the general area of the rotator cuff footprint. So the sutures have been retrieved and passed to the anchor already, and we're applying tension onto the sutures. You see them sliding. We look at the repair. We look at the tendon to make sure the, the tendon is well compressed. And then... Once we're satisfied with the tension on the suture anchor, on the sutures, we screw in the anchor. And there you see it. So now this is after the repair has been completed. You can see the crisscross pattern of sutures, and you can see the tendon underneath the sutures as well. You can see how they all come into these anchors that are now uh, securing all the sutures nicely. So this is after the repair and the footprint of the rotator cuff 
how the rotator cuff is supposed to be attached onto the bone has been restored. So these final pictures are side-by-side -side photos of the same, from the same vantage point. So we're looking from the side of the shoulder. We're looking at the rotator cuff on the left side. On the left image, the rotator cuff is on the top of the image. Directly under that, you're looking into the shoulder joint with the socket of the shoulder deep in the picture. Closer to us, the more rounded side is the ball of the shoulder joint. And then even closer to us from that, is the bone that the rotator cuff is normally attached to. We don't see, we don't typically see into the joint like this because the rotator cuff is normally blocking our view. So then on the right picture, this is after the repair has been completed. You can see the sutures are all crisscrossing and coming down into the two plastic anchors, not visualized in this picture, but they're there. And you can see the tendon under the sutures has now been compressed onto the bone. Uh, and so this completes the rotator cuff repair. So I hope this provides you with some additional insight into how I typically perform an arthroscopic rotator cuff repair. If you have any questions about this procedure or have shoulder problems yourself, uh, please come seek us out. You can find us online at uoanj.com. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Um, we're more than happy to help. Take care. Bye-bye.